Hello. Yeah. Thought I'd go live for a little bit, short while. I know the football season is over and this is kind of a wrap up. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue doing shows on Wednesdays or not, but I thought I would do one today. David, what's up, man? See if anybody tunes in. Man, you know, we could talk about things other than football. I cannot believe the weather here in Wisconsin. For those of you that are that live here, it's unbelievable. It's like 50 degrees outside. You know what I did? I mean, wait, not what I did. It's like, just like the rest of you that are from here, if you're especially from southeastern Wisconsin, I've shoveled snow like one time, like one inch. I'm starting to buy into this global warming thing. I don't know, man. Strange. Strange. All right, let me do a few things here. Like I said, this is going to be a quick show. Talk a little football. Talk about whatever you want. There is a lot to talk about, too, believe it or not. Actually, are you one of those people, like, when the Packers aren't, are done, I mean, I enjoy watching other teams play and stuff like that, and I was just ready for the season to be over. Once the Packers are out of it, I'm kind of that way. I mean, I'm I follow it. I, I do this every day of my life. So, I mean, I, I'm always in, in tune with what's going on or checking in. But this year, man, I don't know. I was so disappointed about, I'm not going to live in the past, but that San Fran game. You know, I just, I, like every like a lot of us out there, I couldn't help but, you know, think about beating the Chiefs and how we should have beat San Fran. And I think we would have I think we would have beat Detroit. I think we had the mental edge this year. It was lightning in a bottle. We just weren't able to pull it off. Oh well. All right. Anybody out there? What are you having for lunch? <laughs> I'm having leftovers. Hot beef. Oh, I love it. Can you guys see the steam coming off of there? This is leftover hot beef from St. Therese. There's a school here in Kenosha that does a fundraiser on Super Bowl. And they sell one pound uh, containers. They come like this. They're great. 15 bucks. I thought that was such a cool idea. See? Just like that. And you can put them in the freezer too. Put them in a bag. Whenever you have beef. Now, if you may, if you sell beef sandwiches here in Kenosha, you better have like really good beef because everybody here has good beef sandwiches. Everybody claims they have the best beef sandwich, right? So, look in when I put it in the freezer to save it, I put it in the bag just in case the juice leaks. Joe Stincato made that beef. It was good. Gave us an extra pound, too. We bought five pounds, gave us six pounds. It's awesome. What I like to do, and beef sandwiches are critical. Everybody's like, oh, put the juice on the bun, put the juice on the bun. I'm not a fan of that because it gets too mushy. So I just put a little bit of juice on it. Cut your bun. This is like a, this is your standard bun, right? I like kind of the soft and like a hard and soft bun. I don't know. Don't cut your hand off. <laughs> oh, man. See, 
kind of thin. Perfect. You know what else I like to do? Put some pickles on there. The perfect fork. It's like a little bit bigger to grab the beef out. Love it. I'm gonna cut these thinner. Anybody tune in yet today? <laughs> What's up? Clark, how you doing? Clark Bernhardt. What's happening? Don't mind me, I'm just preparing some food. I do like these Wednesday shows. They're, it's, it's cool. Plus I'm excited how everybody thinks the Packers are going to be great, which we are. <laughs> Now, if we would have had a terrible year and we would have went south when we were like three and six or four and six and it would have got worse, we only had five, six wins this year, I might be thinking a little bit differently. But the way I feel about this team and what I observed this year, man, I'm excited about the future. Wow. Cool. All right. So I put pickles on there just like that. See? Then, I take my beef. <laughs> Set just a little arm at a time. Oh, I love it. If, to if my buddy Tommy Wad comes on this show, he's going to be like, <laughs> he's a beef fanatic. You guys can probably hear that. It's probably annoying as hell. <laughs> Maybe a little juice on there. Maybe a little bit. Hey, man, I want to give a shout out to Tristan Jazz from our hometown here in Kenosha. His father and I went to grade school together. Jeff, he's going to be playing in the All-Star game this weekend. Tristan Jazz, man. Cool. Kid's a dynamo on social media. He's got like 5 million followers on YouTube. Tristan Jazz, man. Cover the Kenosha News. Playing in the tournament. All-Star Weekend. How cool is that? Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to put a little juice on there. Just a little. Just a little. Jason Tappy, what's up, man? Give me a second, please. Here we go. There it is. Not too much beef though. Just enough. Oh. Too good. Let's see who's on here. If anybody's on here. I didn't promote this show. I just jumped on here to say hello. Hey, Clark. It was would have, could have, should have Packer season. I know it. Beat out the expectations and just finished a little short. Future is bright. I'm with you. Two thumbs up on that. Hey, Roman. Vegetable beef soup. Sounds yummy. Yummy. from Cali, Packer fan. What's up, Ruben? Hope everybody's recovering from the season.
Dan Larson, how are you? Excited for the next year. I'm with you. What do you guys think? Let's ask, I'm going to ask this question. Is Jordan Love to you as at, at least as good as Brock Purdy? We can agree on that, right? What do you think? Uncle Rick! What's for lunch, Uncle Rick? <laughs> David said he's going to come and cook for us on one of these days on the show. That'd be cool. I don't know how many more of these shows. I might wait till we get closer to the draft. But there's definitely some things to talk about. I mean, my question again, is, is Jordan Love to you as, at least as good as Brock Purdy? I think so. Right? So if he's at least as good as him, if not better, of course, we scored, man. <laughs> good job. I mean, I like to think that Jordan is at least a top 10 quarterback, right? Is, is that safe to say? Because that's a bold statement. If, if you feel he's a top 10 quarterback, that is. Eddie Rendazzo from New York. Eddie, you never miss a show, dude. Love it. I'm usually unhealthy upset after our season ends with a loss. But this year I'm excited for the future. It's nice for once. I just, you know what, Eddie, about that too? It's like, we are set up perfectly with the draft. We got this young team, bunch of, like some people are like, we're not that young. I'm like, yes, we are. We got this young team with, you know, all these draft picks. The higher ups can do whatever they want. Yeah, we don't have a lot of spending money, but for the most part, we can fill in maybe another inside linebacker. You know, I was having a discussion today with my brother Rocky and Rick Stella, and I learned some things today. You know, like the DBs and the safeties and the, in, the inside linebackers, those are the guys that really run the show on defense, right? So they're like the, the cornerbacks and safety are like the athletes of the team. So the better the athlete, the better your defense is. I don't know if that makes total sense. I'm kind of winging it here a little bit, but I'm, I'm learning too as we go because we've struggled with defense and tackling for 10 years, man. I mean, I'm just a standard fan that loves the Packers, but I was like, why can we not tackle? And so some of this made, made sense is that we just need more athletic DBs. Cornerback, safety, got to have a badass safety, man. Hard hitting. Did you see how Kansas City's Cornerbacks were like right up on them. That played a role in them winning that Super Bowl. Definitely. What do you think about Jordan using his legs more, too? Because in the NFL, right, you want to establish yourself as a pocket passer. That's what's going to make you, you, you. Great. I mean, that's that. If you can accomplish being a pocket passer, then I think you know Lafleur can work more with Jordan on getting out of the pocket. Because let's let's face it. I mean, if you watch that Super Bowl game, uh, Mahomes had some big runs at critical times to get that first down that could ultimately have won the game. And that's what I'm hoping Jordan can do now that he's shown that he can be a pocket passer. If that makes any sense, I don't know. That's just how I feel about it at the moment and about him. Because there was a few times against San Fran, if he would have just ran or, you know, just from a fan's perspective, that might have kept, you know, the drive going. Excuse me. I'm hungry. <laughs> How you guys doing for those just tuning in? Hey, Scott. Mike Bard, all right. What's up, Mike? Good to see you. 
Wings in the air fryer. Wow. Cool. How do they turn out? Do you put any sauce on them? What kind of sauce to put on them wings? Or do you just do them the way they are? You got to put some kind of sauce on there. That's for sure. Thanks for the people tuning in. I wasn't sure anybody would even be here. I didn't promote it. Wasn't sure I was going to do it. Kind of winging it. Greg Menacha having a homemade tailgate Swiss steak for my lunch. Damn, that sounds good. You putting any cheese on that? Oh, yeah. Swiss steak. Are you putting cheese on that? Swiss cheese, I'm assuming, right? You know, I'm from Wisconsin, but you're not going to believe this. I actually stay away from cheese a little bit. <laughs> cheese, like too much cheese doesn't agree with me, so I, I actually am a little cautious of that. Rick, I was going to take a break, but I couldn't help it, man. I'm too diehard. <laughs> Thanks, Hector. Hector, enjoying my beef sandwich for sure. Cool, there's actually some people here. I, I, honestly, I wasn't sure. Mike said, at, at the end of the day on the season, I said eight to nine wins would be a good season. I think we all felt that way, for sure. We did that and got playoff experience for our young guys, thank you for saying that. That was my biggest thing going into the playoffs. Was, you know, see, I wasn't sure we could win. I was like, okay, we got hot when we were in, you know, the last game against the Bears. We were inside at Lambeau, and I was like, man. I looked at Rick and my brother Rocky. I'm like, I think we can win in the playoffs too. And we got hot at the end. You know, it was such a weird thing. It was like the fan base in Green Bay was like, what is going on? Are we can we actually like? win-win like continue to win in the playoffs so you know everything changed right Mike it's like okay we are good <laughs> that's 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 cool man that we we have that to look forward to yeah agreed hi Barb Barb Kramer I'm excited to see what who stays? You know, we're going to talk a little bit about that, Barb. And who's drafted? Reading all the comments makes me crazy. You know, in Green Bay, and we all know this, the way the system works there, and I'm not a know-it-all, I just share what I see, we always sign our guys first. That's how it works in Green Bay, right? We're not a huge, huge free agency team, but we have grabbed some over the years so but first and foremost Barb, truthfully i i think we're gonna see some people sign that maybe we thought would leave you know aj Dillon. I, I talked a little bit about him you know he's making a million million and a half million three right now you know he's ezekiel elliott elliott money he's 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 gonna be looking for three or four million dollars you know are the packers gonna sign him he's at the end of his rookie contract I think he could get signed. 850 carries in college, 550 carries with the Packers. That's a lot. So, you know, that's the decision they're going to make with him. You know, I'd like to see Nixon come back, our punt returner. Maybe he wasn't the great in, as a DB or cornerback, but how do you get rid of that guy for special teams, right? God, I hope we don't lose him. So, you know, Campbell, you know, a year ago, he was like a stud, signed a $50 million deal. Are they going to keep him? I hope they do. I like him. I like him on the field. But was he $10 million a year money this year? I don't think so. But that doesn't mean he can't come back next year or this upcoming year, right? Just food for thought. That's all. Roman. What's up, buddy? Jordan Love is better than Purdy. Man, it's going to be interesting what San Francisco does. That's a team that we got to beat now. That's a team we got to compete with. You know, they, they might not look the same next year, but I'm, I'm curious what they're going to do to see if uh, 
Shanahan goes after Cousins because they're buddies, right? Vikings, no way are the Vikings going to give him $45 million a year. No way. If they do, if they sign that $90 million a year contract, what he's looking for, wow. After an injury, too, that would be shocking. Love is a guy who can make big plays by improvising and made pretty good decisions as the year went on. His decision-making improved. That's what we love, right? We did see that. It's so hard to talk about Jordan Love and saying the word love. And today's a lovely day. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. Three different things about love today. <laughs> I love the guy. I love Jordan Love. And it's Valentine's Day. Lots of love. Uh... Puts him ahead in my book. Love is better this year. Ruben. Love is better this year. Ours. I don't know. I didn't follow that one. Chuck Barber, ESPN rated Love as the second best QB in the NFC. Wow, I have not heard that yet. That's awesome. Behind Stafford. Interesting, Chuck. Thanks for that information. I love learning from you. That's another reason I like doing these shows. I learn from you guys. I'm a middle-of-the-road fan, man. Some people are, you're wrong, you're right, I'm right, you're right. I'm not one of those fans. I watch some people get in some heated discussions over who's right and wrong. Do we really know? It's always a guess, right? You know, another thing, too, I wish Joe Barry the best, but he just didn't. He, that guy, I, this is the last time I'm going to talk about it, because, you know, there's a lot of people that think he was actually a good defensive coordinator, which I, I think the team did improve, and I think the offense improved at the end of the year, but I was really happy to get move on from him. And and rumor has it that LaFleur really wanted Jeff Halfley. Like, there was no doubt about it. See, Jeff Halfley can be like a co-head coach. See, to me, LaFleur just wants to be the head coach and work with Jordan Love. He doesn't want anything to do with the defense. Why would he? And Halfley can come in and take over like that. That's the way I see it, right? At the end of the year, remember... LeFleur was at the podium and everybody's asking him questions. He was just moody as hell, man. He was pissed. He had to get more involved with the defense, right? And we did improve. He doesn't want that. That's why I like Halfley. He can come in, you know, be aggressive. You know, that's a buzzword that's get thrown around a lot. I'm excited to see what Halfley can do. Not surprised that they grabbed him. Joe says, Joe Ackerman says, love's numbers don't lie. I know, I can't believe it, Joe. When I've looked at some of his statistics, I'm not a statistical guy. Never have been. I don't know why. But his are off the charts. Sorry, I'm getting notifications while we're, I'm talking here. He is a legit QB and the future is bright for him. Can't wait till next year to watch him with these receivers he has. Going to be a blast. You know what I love when it came out that the the receivers and some of the offensive guys were going to his house? I keep thinking in my head, wow, how cool is that, right? They're all sitting around shooting the breeze. Bunch of young guys, what, 23, 24, 25 years old? Love invited them to their to his house, man. He's like, let's talk. They, I could just imagine them guys talking football. About, and I think they improved because of that. That is beautiful to me to see that, you know, they came together, that friendship. We as friends have not seen that 
in Green Bay. I'm not going to put down Aaron Rodgers. I'm not going there at all. But didn't we kind of lose that? And that's been a refresher for us as fans to hear and see that these guys are, are having a blast. Right? I want to be in that house, man. I want to I wanna go hang out with Jordan and the players, man. Maybe that's what we're going to do. I'm going to reach out to Jordan. Say, hey, man, Joey T, diehard Packer fan, come into your house and hang out. Do a broadcast. Show the fans you guys hanging out, having a good time. Off the field, you know? I'm kind of a transparent guy that way. Always have been. Hey, Alan Crow, nice to see you. Jordan Love is a top 10 QB. He will only get better. That's another thing. You know, a few people have... You know, I'm not sure. The only thing I'm a little worried about is giving him too much money. I think he's earned it, but I'm just fearful of it a little bit. Because I don't, there's no way this is going to happen, but I have to mention it. How many times have we seen great players get big contracts and they either get hurt, God forbid, they, you know, they lose that excitement to be on the field and play or they're just not the same player happens a lot more than we'd like to admit actually i just is he 50 million a year i don't know you guys what's your opinion on that just dump a bunch of money at him right away e worries me a little bit just a little just a little. That's all. Dan Larson says, I think love is better just for the reason that Purdy seems a little tentative at times. That's why I thought we would beat San Fran. I thought Purdy was going to choke. They made three huge caps, uh, caps, catches in the fourth quarter that changed that game for us. Purdy was kind of off. Andy was off in the Super Bowl too. That's why I thought we would catch. I thought we'd catch Sam Fran. Damn. See, but our defense didn't have the element of surprise on the last drive. Remember, Kansas City's defense, Spagnola. He shut it down, man. He he was he had that. He did that to stop Sam Fran. Joe Barry didn't make that stop that we needed. You know, is that the player or is that the coach? I got to blame that on the coach. We call it the element of surprise. You follow me? That's how I feel. That's why I was done with Joe. When we couldn't stop San Fran on that last drive that put them up, that, that was it for me. Jason Toppy, I think the Packers should sign Henry in free agency to pair him up with Aaron Jones. That's an option. Not everybody agrees with it. But what is he, 31 now? Are you getting the same thing as Dylan? Would you get a better version of Dylan? I don't know. That's just for us as fans to talk about, right? It should only cost about four or five million to sign him. Oh, okay. I'm sure he's trading less money for a ring. Good point. Hi, Tina. How are you? Nice to see you. You're having an Italian sub. What's on it? Speaking of, I'm taking another bite. Oh, man. This is a great bite. The middle bite. Love it. <laughs> Sorry. Man, this is a great show today. Thanks for tuning in. Wasn't sure anybody would be here. Maybe I will continue doing shows on Wednesdays. You guys like it? Shooting the breeze, middle of the week, lunchtime? Some do. Crispy wings, man. Salt, pepper, garlic. And some Frank's hot sauce. Ooh, man, hot sauce, how hot? 
I'm not a hot sauce person. I, I'm kind of more mild, but a lot of people can handle hot sauce. I can't handle it. Becky from Gilbert. What's up, Becky? Good to see you on the thread with us. Players don't wrap up when they try to tackle. They throw their bodies at the runner. Dan Larson. You know what, Dan? I, honestly, my opinion on that, and I, I've recognized it more and more, these guys are tackling high. I think they're afraid to get hurt. I do. I had a long discussion with my brother Rocky about it. One of the few, you know, we, Rocky and I agree and disagree sometimes. We agreed on that. They just seem to tackle high. Now, that's why I'm, I want good tacklers, man. I'm with you, Dan. Totally. Dan, I don't know what to say about Ayuk. I wasn't 100% sure about that. But what I will say about this in the heat of the moment, when you're upset, a receiver, we talked about Brandon Ayuk and saying we, he wishes he had a quarterback like Jordan Love, you might say that, right? He might say something like that. We pulled it off Twitter. So, uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed Jordan Love in Vegas. Doing all those interviews, I really enjoyed that. That was cool. Seeing him like that, he looks so calm, so relaxed. I'm like, yeah, man, that's our quarterback. Love it. Because I was hesitant of Jordan early on. I got to be one of the, I have to admit, I have to be, I'm one of those fans. I was like, dude, his accuracy has to improve. This, I can't, I almost do it sometimes. I couldn't watch it. It was tough for me to watch. And then, boom, they started clicking, man. I was like, yes. You know, then I questioned myself. I'm like, Joe, you got to be more patient, man. It's early. You know, but I'm, we're used to winning. So, you know, Packer fans had to go through a bit of a transition like that. Take care, Ruben. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Scott Schwartz. What's up, Scotty? I was extremely surprised the Niners didn't know about the overtime rules. Exactly. I couldn't believe that either. When I heard that, I was like, what? I mean, total advantage to Kansas City, right? They knew exactly what they had to do. I mean, you knew it was going to be four down territory on every single play, every 10 yards, or every first down, but wow. What did he think? If they tie it up, he'd get, uh, I, I, I don't know. That was a weird one, Barb. I couldn't believe it. Mistakes do lose games. Yes, the Bears still suck, Bill. <laughs> Linda, hello from Nevada. Were you at the game? Well, or where did you watch the game? If you were at the game, you play, You paid a pretty penny to go, see, to go to that. Man. Just think next year when we're in the... When we make it to the Super Bowl, ha, 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 I have faith in the pack. I do want to put, I do want to put a hundred bucks on the pack to, to win the Super Bowl at 25 to one. I heard it dropped to 20 to one. And then I actually heard it drop to 16. So if you're, if you're a person that likes to place a wager, that would be a fun one to do for 50 or a hundred bucks. We had a passive defensive coordinator in the past. Yeah, quite a few of them. Hopefully, Halfley gets their face gets in their face when need be. That's what we're you know. I'm with you on that, Chuck. That's what I want to see, man. I want to see somebody fired up at these guys. I want to see these guys get fired up from our defensive. I, I'm I'm just I'm I'm interested to see what the players think of it too. Think of him. Sorry, give me a second. Tommy Watt, what's up, dude? Oh, yeah, I'm having potato chips, too.
This is going to sound funny, but these are the best toothpicks ever. <laughs> I give these credit because my dentist goes, man, you have no plaque. That's because I use these. And the string never breaks, right? All those other ones, the little string breaks, not these. Love it. <laughs> you know what else I love, too? This little gadget. For my coffee. Hey, man, we can talk about anything on this show, and I only stay live until you guys are gone. <laughs> the show lasts a half hour, lasts a half hour. The show lasts, lasts an hour, lasts an hour. A strong defensive coordinator acting like a second head coach is a wonderful thing. Bill Capster, I'm with you, Bill. Cheers to that. Fritz Shermer as Holmgren's defensive coordinator is a good example. Exactly. Braylon Allen, Wisconsin kid. Is that the, is that the guy that played in the Super Bowl? What? You got to give us some more information. What are you eating? It's the first day of Lent. I know. Ash Wednesday, but I'm having a beef sandwich. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> Mike Bart, hell yeah, man. Like taking a short break to do this every week. Oh, thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Keep doing the shows. I'll keep coming. DHBF. Appreciate that. Tommy Watts says it's because teams draft players based on speed and size, not fundamentals. Tommy Watts, good, good coach. Tommy's been coaching his son and been around a lot of good coaches. I, I trust what he says. That's that that makes sense, Tommy. Alan Crow, chicken cacciatore sub. Wow, that sounds good. I'm a chicken eater. Tina Wilson sent 530 stars. Well, that was awfully kind of you, Tina. Thank you for that. Justin McIntosh, what's up? All right, you guys, this is going to be a short show. Some of the things I want to wrap up with is when I mentioned before about uh, Jordan Love, he can't run all year long, right? You know, there was a few people that said he seemed a little scared to run, but if he becomes a runner all year long, then that... that becomes a risky thing right at that point but I just I think Jordan has to be more of a runner I'm not saying he's got to run all the time I don't want that we don't want that we want a pocket passer we got a great offensive line I'm sure we're going to grab another offensive line or two because the Pats the Packers way right to protect him but we don't want him running all year long that's for sure Sorry, Roman. Joe uses the same flosser when you pull that out of the bag. Roman says, "What do you? How do you feel about the Super Bowl logo? Color controversy. You know what? I don't believe in it. I don't." I don't know. Didn't last year's have Baltimore's colors on it? Or this year? Last year now? They didn't make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, I think that's a fluke. 
I, th- I mean, they they probably know, they obviously know who the top teams are, so maybe they take, like, the top eight teams, and they're like, okay, who, who do we think is going to win it this year? You know, so you might get one team right, you might get lucky and get both teams right, but I don't totally believe in that, Roman. I really don't. Oh, the running back from Wisconsin, yeah. You like him? Dude, he's huge. That's right. That guy's like 250, 260 or something. Linda, oh, I don't know. Nademo? You are the best. Love the shows. Thank you for that, Linda. I appreciate that. Awesome. How we doing, Joey T? Not bad. Missing Packer football already. Going to be a long off season. Justin, I'm going to say to that, I like a little bit of a break. But I know what you mean. I just do. You know, it's nice. Someone mentioned about love running. And, you know, short Short runs for, for our quarterback, I mean, I mean, I've been sticking on this subject quite a bit about Jordan running because I think that's kind of the missing link a little bit. I hope he can develop more into that because three, four-yard runs are good runs, right? And if he can get out of the pocket and go for three, four yards, I like it. Justin, did you make it to any games this year? Kim Jasinski, how are you? Nice to see you. Kim's up there in Viking territory. I think we got their number. I think the Vikings are in the cellar next year. I do. <laughs> uh, only way Packers go offense... In the first round is if they get a wide receiver. You know, that's that's a good topic, actually, Paul. Paul Vanden. We went so many years when Rodgers, like 2018, 19, 20, where I was like, why are we not getting, of course, we got Jordan Love, but some people said they would have traded in Jordan Love to have a Super Bowl. I was surprised that the higher-ups didn't, Grab a wide receiver or two early, you know? So are they going to do it this year? I don't know if a wide receiver would go because in the first round, I wouldn't mind it, but everybody seems to disagree with me because they're like, why waste that? We don't need it. We got wide receivers. There's other positions to fill, you know, inside linebacker, safety. I, I get all that. But again, is Watson a number one? Reed our number two? Romeo kind of stepped up a lot? I mean, we got receivers. Wicks, we're good. I just, I don't know. I, I'm kind of with you on that, Paul. I, I, if, the, if one of the better receivers is available, I don't know. I, I, would, I would take it for Jordan. I would add that. But again, most people disagree with that, which is fine. But yes, it wouldn't surprise me, just like you said, if we go heavy on defense, right? Because there's positions to fill on defense. So there you go. Maybe running back in the second or third round. That is definitely something I could see happening. Is a badass running back. Even moving up. Somebody mentioned that kid from Texas. See, I'm not good with that. I don't watch college football like I watch... The NFL. I got my brother Rocky and Rick Stella for that. <laughs> and you guys. Somebody always knows. What would be the running back? Who would be the first running back? I like that Crumbs kid. I think that's how you say his name. From Michigan. I've been on him. Steady. Feel free. It's like If you want to mention somebody who's a, a good running back for us. Because that is definitely going to be a, a focal point. With the Packers this year. What's your thoughts on the draft, Joey? Oh, sorry, Mike. That's just what I'm kind of... I mean, I, again, what I just mentioned, how could they not... Halfley's going to be involved in this draft. 
So I'm sure that Gudekunst and Lafleur and him are talking about it, right? When they hired him, I'm sure he's like, hey, listen, I'll come and coach for the Green Bay Packers, but I'm going to need this, this, and this. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? See, I think they talk like that amongst each other. I really do. In today's world, going back to transparency, I think they, they're just open. I think Brian goes, gets advice from Lafleur and says, "Hey, what did what did you see?" You know, and I think vice versa. You know, maybe Lafleur says to him, and happily they say, "What are you thinking? Who do you like?" This is a, what, I like talking about this right now because this is something that never gets discussed in most broadcasts. It's like I would love to know who the Packers are interested in. I know you're never going to know that. Because they can't let the other teams know that. But I would love to know. Like, who's their number one? Who's their first and second round? What are they thinking? I wish there was a way to find that out. <laughs> uh, we can guess, though. Mike says he's a big fan of second and third round picks over first round picks. I'm with you on that. We've had a lot of first round busts. Not, not Van Ness, though. <laughs> that kid is going to be a stud, and I hope they bring back Preston Smith, too. He's another one that kind of overachieved. I thought he was getting a little bit old, right? He was starting to show signs of age. No way, man. He was outstanding. Man, I was wrong about a lot, a lot of things. I'd like to see Preston Smith come back. Oh, man, Chuck, did you have to go there? Big question. What are we going to do with Bakhtiari? My brother Rocky thinks we're going to keep him. He does. What do you guys think? You keep Bakhtiari or you get rid of him? If he's healthy, that's another thing. How do you know with that, right? How can you tell if a guy, he's either going to say to the, is he, the organization, all right. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Does he tell the organization or does the organization have him check and say, I just can't play anymore? Or is he good enough to play and says, I can play? <laughs> now, what does the organization do? Right? Do they take that risk? I don't know. Share your thoughts on that one. I don't know what they do with Bakhtiari. I know one thing. He's a hell of a lot of money. Too much. You know what, I heard he had a lawsuit against his first surgeon. I wonder if that's true. Tom Power says, Rocky said we don't need that number one receiver. We got young guys. Yeah, but for years he always wanted receivers. I got to double check with him on that because I I think he want, he'd like another receiver, but not in the first round. See, I would love to, I'd love to get a great guy in the first round. Hey, Roger Soraki. What's up, Roger? I would say we should draft defense first, then a wide receiver after a safety or corner. Very straightforward. Could definitely happen. What Roger just said right there, I could see that happening. Totally. I could see I could see defense inside linebacker and then a safety or, or vice versa in the first two rounds. We do got extra picks, right? <clears throat> we got 11 picks. Interesting to see. I'm curious to see what they're going to do this year. Justin, you were at the last game. That was a great game. I promise next year Justin's from Illinois. I love it. We love Packer fans from Illinois. I know I sound redundant when I say that, but I love a Packer fan that lives in Chicago, man. Because that thinks, you know what, cool unis, man. <laughs> Bear fans do not like Packer fans in Chicago. They've, they've actually calmed down a little bit because we've been dominating for so long. But back in the 70s and 80s, nah. That was a real thing. Justin said he promises he's going to come to Lot 1. I hope he comes here. We'll put you on the show, Justin. 
Come see us in lot one. We'll definitely, we'll put you on for five or ten minutes. We did with Mike Bard. He was great. If you're coming to lot one, man, hit us up. Might put you on the show. We love doing the show in lot one. It's great. We'll be back there next year. Ah, oh, man. You guys are, you keep coming. Wait a minute. I feel you break engaged on free agency. I'm losing. I lost you on that one, Justin. Sorry. You're excited for free agency and draft. Are we gonna go? Are we gonna do any free agency things? I think we might. Everybody says there's not enough money. I wish I knew more about the cap. I told myself, the one thing I'm going to, because I leave that up to Russ Ball and those guys, let them worry about all that stuff. But I told myself, I'm going to learn more about cap and dead dead money and moving money into the future and all that stuff. I'm just not that well versed on it. Some people are really good at it. Mike Bard, it's a risky proposition to keep Bach. Okay, thanks for your opinion on that. It sure is. He has to pass his physical, otherwise we're screwed. Joe Akinet says, Bach has not earned his salary because of his injuries. Tommy Watt says, if Bach is healthy play and plays like he can, he becomes, we become the best line in the NFL. Paul Vandenplas. I tried to get Rocky to come on the show today, but he had to go see the doctor, his doctor with uh, his Achilles, which is doing really well. So, otherwise, he would have joined me today. I agree with what Rocky said last week about Bach. If we can restructure his deal, good point. And it's only about $6 million more to keep him versus cut him. I think they'd be foolish to cut him. Best left tackle in the league when healthy. Amen. Jeremy Schmidt, nice to see you, Jeremy. I really like Bach. However, his injuries are a big deal part ways. See, now, is there a right or wrong answer? You let him go, and he goes and, and he's great somewhere else. Eh, we decided to go young. Now, if he goes somewhere else and gets injured... Or his knee swells up, like that's what ultimately happens to him, is his knee swells up after a game or halfway through the game. It isn't rocket science what's happening to Bakhtiari, right? He's working it and it swells up. He comes out of the game. Then it's a good decision. I'm curious. I'm going to watch closely. We should watch closely. Well, we're going to on Bakhtiari to see how he handles the organization. A lot of people are like, oh, he's going to go to the Jets. I don't think so. I don't think he's going to go to the Jets. I think he would retire over anything. I'm curious to see what he's... Again, that's where the transparency thing comes in, you know? Tell us how you feel. I'd love to see a, an interview with Bakhtiari in another, you know, right before the draft. Give him another month. Let the, let the dust settle. The season's over now. Let's hear what Bakhtiari has to say. Come on, man. Tell us how you feel. Lie to us. Tell us you feel great. <laughs> See, I like Bakhtiari. I'm kind of with you. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'd love to see Bakhtiari come back. But he's expensive. Joe and Goody we trust. I'm going to sit back and watch the master go to work. All right, a few people staying on here. We've got to wrap it up here in a minute, guys. I'll be back, dude. Lot one is so much fun. Next year, I'll be there much earlier to hang out. You're welcome to join us. Couldn't get my sister out of bed. <laughs> You can't train too much before the game. I, I've actually trained myself to not do that. Got to be careful, man, with how much you consume before game day. Because there's plenty of hours to consume on game day and plenty of plenty to go around, that's for sure. 
Let us know if you're coming to Green Bay this year, man. You know what? Tickets are going to be a little bit harder to come by this year. I, uh, this up and coming season. You don't have to. You don't have to worry when they come out in April with the tickets. You don't have to run and go get some right away and go pay a bunch of money. You know, Rocky and I talk a lot about that. There's always tickets available at Lambeau, but I do believe this year might is going to be a little bit different. Probably be a little bit more expensive, because why? We're supposed to win. We're gonna win, man. Uh, yeah, good one, Becky. I was gonna say, Tommy, wow, where's the pizza you've been promising me for lunch? Oh, you're out of town. That's right. <laughs> Roger, if he's healthy, keep Bakhtiari. Good. I'm glad to see people think we should keep Bakhtiari. Because I, I was wondering how you guys felt about that. I just want to hear from him. I want to get an update. Again, are we ever going to get that? Probably not. Bach is great, but it's time for him to go. Ben Johnson. Our line played great this year without him. So, there you have it. No right or wrong, Ben. I, 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 I'm with you on your opinion. Players truly love love. Yes, Chuck, they do. That's why I want to go hang out with them. I want to feel the love, man. I'd love to go do a broadcast with him. With Rodgers, he just thought players loved him. <laughs> That's funny. And the Jets play the Packers next year. I don't think Rodgers is going to play. I think he's done. I really do. I can't. I cannot picture him risking going on that field and number one getting injured and number two playing like shit <laughs> what if he plays like shit <laughs> or he gets hurt I, I i think rogers is done just an opinion joe hacken it signed out take care joe Tommy White, you're going to get one of these when I see you. Should do a DHPF tailgate preseason. Homemade Italian sausage and rigs. Becky Rose, let us know if you're coming to Lambeau. Next season, we can discuss scheduling you on the show. Yes. Might have to, you might have to, dude, we might have to test you. Can't have 50 people coming to ask me on the show. <laughs> but, never know. Maybe we'll do that. Pick somebody to be on the show if you're coming to Lambo. Gotta let us know ahead of the time. Kurt said, from what I hear, Love invited the receivers over for dinner once a week. Was it once a week? Wow. I didn't know that. Wow, that's great. Something that Brett kind of did. Yeah. We definitely talked about that. All right, you guys. Appreciate you tuning in on for another Wednesday show. Um, I'll decide whether we're going to keep doing them. As long as you guys are here, I guess I'll commit to another one next Wednesday. All right. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you soon. Go Pack. Peace.